everyone. It's Michelle. How are you doing today? I'm so excited to be here in my hallway on this rainy kind of dark day. So the lighting is, is really pants, as Tracy would say. And I'm here today for day 25 of Creep on June. Uh, such a fun collaboration. I hope you've been with us the whole month. There's been so many makers with so many great ideas, and I'm excited to be the one to play with you today. So what are we doing today? Well, if you've been around for the month, you may remember that I was here on day seven, and I did two projects then. I made these little tiny ornaments out of little actual matchboxes. I don't know if we're getting that in focus. And then I made snippet rolls out of her kit using Amazon packaging and just regular copy paper. We're gonna take these two projects and combine them today to make a super cool piece of Halloween or October decor using really inexpensive things you probably already have around the house. So what will you need? You will need a glass vase. I had, um, everybody has glass vases or, or maybe a pickle jar or a jar. What you're looking for is a piece of clear glass that has flat sides. This one I got at my recycling center for free. I think it's a wine carafe. Um, it's a little smaller than what I wanna use, but I'm gonna put it in the lineup just in case this is the one I use. I had this one probably from a floral arrangement. It's so big that my husband probably gave me or I got as a gift. I really like the size. I like how the branches splay out in it but it's not 100% flat, so we'll see if it gives us any problems today. And then let's talk about these branches. I walked around my yard and found things that had fallen to the ground that had lots of little tiny branches on them. And that's perfect. And you could keep them exactly like that, but I decided to spray paint mine. I went in my basement, I looked for what I had. I had some black spray paint with a silver tinge and I was able, these, this is four branches right here. I was able to lay them on the lawn on a piece of cardboard and spray paint them in less than 10 minutes. And within a half an hour, they were ready to come inside. You know, in the hot summer sun, like that, they were ready. So that's what we're using today. We're using things that you probably have around your house, things that um, won't break the bank, and you'll make a really cool, fun piece of home decor for Halloween. Now, if you're doing with this with me in June, you have plenty of time. You could just be working on this for the next couple of few months as you have time. And if you're working on this in October, I bet you, you can turn this around in lickety split time. So let's go to the craft room and get started on this project. Okay, friends, we are in the craft room. And I am going to get this party started. What are we going to need today? We're going to need a ruler, some distress ink, some eyelets, some glue. I have some black ribbon, some scissors, a hole punch. And of course, I need the snippet roll master boards. Now, the original master board that I created on day seven, I put on the back of Amazon packaging. And... Many of you said you had a hard time watching me cut it, which I understand. Uh, it, it is hard sometimes to think about cutting it. But uh, people did ask why I didn't photocopy it and gave the idea of doing that. And I should have addressed that in the first video. Yes, whenever I make a master board or a snippet roll before I cut it, I always scan it so that I can use it over and over and over again. So I ended up making, because I realized that this, the way that I designed this master board, everything was mostly coming up and down, and that's how I cut it. But then that didn't leave me enough to wrap, wasn't wide enough to wrap around another, to wrap around a vase. Maybe one this thin it might, but prop, see, even here it barely makes it. And on top of that, because of the thickness of it, it's hard to wrap it. This, I think, I'm going to save to make into a journal cover, and I'll use these pieces on a snippet roll or on um, another project. 
I'll make this into a snippet roll and wind it on something. So I'm going to put this aside. This will probably come back in October. Then what I decided to do was make a second master board. I made this in about 35 minutes and I just used plain paper and like from my printer and then just Tracy's kit printed off. And again, you can go to my uh, video that I did on uh, day seven. I'll link it below that shows, shows how to do this. It's so easy, so fun, so relaxing. Because this is on a much thinner piece of paper, I think this will wrap better. And I designed it up and down um, so that it would wrap and look nice. So let me show you when you scan it, how good they come out. So I scanned this one before I did all the splattering and the sewing because I just wanted a, a collage without any of that. And I think that came out great. I can use this for so many things, background papers, envelopes, you name it. I can use it for strips. Like it's, it's a great versatile piece. It could even be a great inside end paper. So I'm, I'm excited about that. This one was the one that has the sewing on it. I think it came out great. And this was the snippet roll one. So as you can see, if you photocopy or scan your master boards before you cut them, look what you have to work with after that point. It's just, it's just fabulous. It's a fabulous thing. Okay, so here we have the master board I created. I just put a little bit of sewing in it and what I wanna do is wrap it around my vase. And my vase, I'm thinking I probably want to center it. And because this is curved, it'll probably be a strip about like this. And since this is eight and a half by 11, I think I am just gonna simply fold this in half and just see where that fold hits and see if I'm happy with that. So what I don't like is that the fold goes right over her face. So what I have to decide, I think, is, oh, it's so hard to make the cut, right? If I cut, then this half of her, this, is, this half of her will be on there, but not as good. So I could either have this be the main focal point on my vase and have a strip that I'll cut off on the bottom and a strip that I'll cut off, off the top. Or I can cut it about here and get the, the owl, the bird, the crow, and the moth. And then I would still have her on this bottom part. So I think that's what I'll do. I One side will be fatter and bigger than the other, but at the same time, I'll try out each one and I'll try out each one on the vase and see how that goes. Now, one of the things I learned from cutting the other one is that it is really hard to cut this on a cutter because there's so many layers and because of the sewing. Now, on this piece here, I put a little bit of collage medium, uh, Tim Holtz collage medium, all over the top. And the reason I did that was so that every piece that I collaged on is flat and it's not going anywhere. It feels, it's matte, there's no shine to it, and there's nothing that's gonna end up like coming up where the, the original master board that I did, I did not do that. And you can see like, you can catch little tiny pieces. So I would suggest doing a small coat of Mod Podge or collage medium or matte medium on your, um, your master board before you, you know, before you, before you cut it. So here's my fold. I'm gonna use my scissors and I will cut on this fold. So let's see how this piece looks on the vase. If I wrap it, I really love that owl in the 72 so much. 
and it does reach. Now, because it's not completely straight, I have this little V in the back, but I don't think that's a big deal at all. All right, let's see how the other piece looks. The other piece covers a lot more. And I do like that it goes to the bottom. But what I would say is the strong, strongest focal points, which are right here, are on the edge. And I don't like that. So I think I'm going to go with the owl. And I have a couple ideas. But look at, like, so on here, this, this would wrap really nicely on here. You could put this on a jar, as you can see. It doesn't have to have an angle. That would be completely fine as well. All right, so I did like the idea of how high it was. So I think I'm gonna have a little bit of an idea here that I wanna share with you that's percolating in my brain right now. So first off, what I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna put a little stitching on the bottom here and on the top here. Now that I know that this is my edge, I think it'll it'll make this piece look stronger if I have some stitching on the edge. Okay, so I have some stitching on the top and the bottom, which I think will give it a nice finished look. So now what I want to do, I'm going to snip these, these threads so they're not driving me crazy during the whole project. And it will meet in the back, as you can see. But like I said, it's gonna have that little notch because it's a little bit on a curve. So I think what I'm going to need to do is I am going to need to put some glue there. But first I have an idea. And I hope, I hope this idea is a good one. I'm a little afraid to do it on this finished piece. So I'm wondering if I should try it on one of these first. I think that might be a good idea. So let me take my cutting board and just make a practice run. First, so what I was thinking about doing, I'll trim off the white just so that it doesn't distract me. As I was thinking about putting a finishing trim on it, but again, I don't want to try it on my good piece. So this is a great way for me to try it here. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to put the ruler on it. And I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to put a, well, I'm going to go in the center. That would be the best thing. So it's, it's 10, so five would be the center. So I'm going to put dots at every inch mark. And one won't be completely even, but I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to come in with my hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole at each paper, each pencil mark. Okay, why did I do that? Well, because I have an idea. I thought it might be fun to take some ribbon and feed it through those holes. And look at that. Do you see that trim? I thought that would add a nice Another cool element to the project, having, having that ribbon. And then I also thought it would be cute to maybe hang a couple charms off of that. So I really like that. 
So let me do that on the real piece. All right, that looks about even. Let's see what this looks like on here. Let's see if I can tie it on just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And it does, tying it on does help. Wow, that's really helpful, that tie. So I could put some glue to keep it stable, but that would really work well for me. I don't know if you can see that. So I also had another idea. So let's tie this on first. Like that. And I'm going to put it aside. Then I'm going to take a bunch of the images from Tracy's kit and I'm going to see if I can pick out some pretty cool pieces of ephemera. Okay, so let's put this guy right like this. If you can see that. Let's see what it would look like to have some things sticking up outside of the label. I think we want them to be somewhat simpler than, let's say, all of this busyness. We want it to be a clean, clean kind of design. Maybe we don't want pictures. Maybe just want tickets and things like that. Um, things that look like not actual images. I like that, but I don't like the two light ones sticking next to each other. So what if we do this one? And we do that one. That looks kind of cool, actually. And what would be kind of neat is putting some grommets in these, these tags. Now, I don't want to be able to see the back. So I'm going to take some black paper and I'm going to glue these pieces on the back. Okay, so I printed out a poison label too because I think that will be important. So all I'm going to do is get a new glue stick is what I'm going to do. These pieces of ephemera to black paper only because I don't want the back of these pieces to be eye-catching. I don't want us to see the white, right? So I'm thinking let's back them with black paper so that when you're on the back side of the back side of the vase, everything looks looks good. Of course, now that I'm thinking about it, that also means the wrap would need to be in black as well. I guess I'll have to think about that. See how much that bothers me or doesn't bother me. I don't mind there being a little extra white around there because I'm just going to be fussy cutting these out anyway. And if I'm smart, I'll move them up to the edge. It's one less side I have to cut, right? So now I'll cut out all the tags um, and pieces of ephemera that are backed with the black paper. And then I will 
take these pieces and a few of them, the ones that are tagged, I'll take my hole punch and I'm going to set some eyelets uh, just because I think that, you know, adding a little bit of metal and some texture will be really good for this collage. So now I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to slowly play around with them, slipping them behind the um, wrap and seeing how it looks. That looks pretty cool. So I don't want to glue it on curved. I think I want it to be centered here. I want the owl to be slightly on the side and the 72 right where it is. So I'm going to und. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to take all these pieces and I am going to um, arrange them the way I think they look good. And then I'll glue them together and glue them to the back of that snippet wrap. So now I'm just going to take each ticket or label and a piece of ephemera and put some glue on the back of each one and glue it to the one behind it. You know, just stacking it and building it as I go. I don't use a ton of glue. I just like to tack it together because I want it to really look 3D. I want I don't want it to be just this melded single piece. I want there I want you to be able to flap at the at the pieces of ephemera and I want them to stand out just a little bit. And the black label with a number, I'm not quite sure where I want it, so I have to play with it for a moment and then I'll stick it on. I want three and one glue because I need it to really stick. Oh, 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 oh. All right, I have one more idea. I have this Destructs Oxide and a little bit of cheesecloth I had laying around. And it has a little bit, of, it has a little metal pin in it, which I'm not even going to bother to take out. And I'm just going to put a little bit of ink. Hopefully I can see this right on there. I have tea dyed and grad espresso. I have my water glass right here from what I'm drinking from. I'm just gonna get a little water and put it down on here. And I'm just going to take my cheesecloth, rub it in this, get it kind of grungy. Get this cheesecloth kind of dirty and grungy and and of course we don't want to waste that so you know, put a little on here it's just This will dry really quick. I mean, it's there's hardly anything to it. So let's take our let's get some 301 going here. And by squirting it, this is kind of warped this a little bit, which I, I really I really like. I'm going to put some three and one on the bottom, a generous amount. And then I'm going to place it where I think I want it. Like that. Hold it down. And I'm going to snip some of this cheesecloth. The piece with the pin. I'm wondering if that can go just sticking out like that. And 
And I'll take another little piece and maybe I'll put it behind here. Just sticking up a little bit. I don't want the blood to be. I want us to still be able to see that it's blood. Or it says the word blood. And then maybe a little bit right here. Like that. And because there's a little bit of a, a blank spot there, I'm going to put a little extra here. And once it's dry, I'm going to be able to mold that a little bit more. Now, this is kind of messy now. I think what I might want to do is cover this with a piece of black paper. And we'll make the back look a little bit neater. Like that. So, I think this is going to keep everything nice and in place. paper I'm putting down right now is like a homemade, very high rag content. It almost feels like fabric. It's very flexible. I actually got it in a paper pack at the dollar store. Um, I'll put the video link below. There is a certain paper pack that you can get there that has amazing handmade papers in it. Okay. I think that looks really cool. I think it's 3D and I like the got, you know, I like this, the, 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 um, cheesecloth on it. Now, I think what's important is even though we're tying it on, we're going to need it to stay in place. So I am going to put a generous amount of three in one glue. right down the top of where I want this to stay in place. Like that, I don't know if you can see that. And then I am going to push this down where I want it to be. And I'm not gonna try to wrap it. I'm just gonna hold my hand down on it with pressure for a few minutes until I know that it's it's taken hold. Okay. Now that it's taken hold, and I've rubbed it a few times, I'm gonna take it and put it on the side and let it dry. I'm gonna get reset here. And what I wanna do is just to make some super simple ornaments that we can create for the tree. I'm not gonna do all of them today because I wanna save some, I wanna play with this and continue to build on it so that by the time October comes, the tree is full of ornaments. But I wanna give you some ideas. We have slides, we have those frames, um, from uh, Tim Holtz. I have another couple of die cuts from here and some little, just some die cuts that are like little slide frames, not specimen slides like this. This is um, Sam Poole, this die cut here. This one is, I don't even know what this one is, just a, a generic cut die cut. And what I think I'm going to do is look at Tracy's Digitals and see if there's some things that make sense for the tree. I don't need all of the frames to be black, although maybe it would be nice for them to be black, but I don't know that it's necessary. And let's... 
That's cool with the eyes. Isn't that cool with the eyes? Oh, this one might be easier. I don't know if it's the same. It might be slightly, is it the same size? Let's see. I guess it's pretty much the same size, but this gives me a little bit more play. So I'm gonna cut this one out. I like the textures that are near it. And what I can do is cut it a little closer like this. And then And as you can see, I've just added some glue. I'm I'm at adhering it to the slide or the little frame and now I'm going to cut out um, the little texture that was next to it and one of the sentiments out of Tracy's kit and I'm going to use those little pieces to decorate a really simple ornament for the tree and I'm just ripping uh, some of that texture gluing it to the top be gluing, gluing a little piece to the bottom and then the sentiment. I'll come in with uh, some glue and back it on some dark card, card stock. And then I will take my crocodile. I'm going to punch a hole in it and I am going to put an eyelet in the top. And I'm going to tie it with, I was going to tie it with that rusty twine of mine and then I decide to um, add some of those iridescent beads that I used in my ornament video just to give the ornament a little bit more cohesive look with the other ornaments that will be hanging on the tree and just to make it slightly more decorative. Just a, you know, tiny little detail, but it'll make this simple, de this simple ornament just look a little bit nicer. And here it is, my little eye very simple ornament with the little beads. And I think it came out great. So now I'm just gonna do a super easy one. Uh, this is with a die, a, a very generic die I have that makes like a round specimen slide, but you could just fold over some cardstock and punch a circle. As you could see, I found the little bat. I thought the bat was really cute underneath it. Uh, was simple, eye-catching, lots of good space on the top and the bottom. So I just trimmed it out, glued it in, and now I'm going to be uh, gluing the specimen side back, you know, gluing it, folding it in half and gluing it. Ugh, that was a mouthful. And uh, now I'm going to cut out a little bit of the lace trim from Tracy's kit. I'm gonna fussy cut the lace edge, which will give it a nice little scallop detail. And then I will uh, also use the bat seminary words that were on the lace. And this is all part of the matchbox. You know, I'm just taking little pieces of details from her kit, just using them a little bit differently. This generic specimen um, die is really basic. You can see how you could just replicate this by taking a piece of cardstock, folding it in half, punching one side a hole out, and then punching um, with your crocodile a hole on the top. And I'm just taking red ink and making some droplets of what look like blood and then gluing on the bat seminary sentiment. And then I'm going to take some black ribbon and very simply feed it through the um, ornaments hole. I could have put an eyelet in there, but because the ribbon is thick enough, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And the goal is on the Halloween tree to have some really elaborate de details or ornaments and then just more simple eye-catching ones. That way there's a good balance and um, you don't have to make every single ornament so you know complex. These are the kind you can throw together in a few minutes. And here it is. I think it's pretty cute and I think it's going to look great on the tree. So, oh, I'm going to add just a little bit more red ink just to fill in some of the negative space.
Okay, for the last ornament, we're gonna make this so simple, you're not even gonna believe it. I'm simply going to take a piece of the photo, you know, a, here, here was the, um, here was my copy that I made, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out a few little images that I really like. Do that owl face again. Who doesn't want a good owl? And we'll do that. have this gray paper here and I'm going to glue these pieces to this gray paper. Let's do these three first, and you know what? I'll uh, I'll glue this to the back of this really nice cardstock. So what I like is there's a little of that collage, which is also on the band, right, right behind it. And um, I could do a couple things. I could, I could, fr this would look terrific framed, actually. Let's move this. Let's see if it's too late to move that. It is not. Let's put him in the middle there. That way I can now take this frame How cool does that look? Right? That's pretty cool. And then I can take this hole punch and punch her out and see the gray is on the back. And let's do the owl if we can center the owl. And it does look like we can. So these two guys are cut out. And this one, I just have to sort of cut a little bit behind the frame. A little bit like fussy cutting, right? Just trying to get it. I might I go behind a little of the details just so that you can't see the paper behind it. Nice. And on these two, I'm just gonna ink it up around the edge. Probably could do some dark soot, which would probably be good. But for this demonstration, I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, and I have this one, which is smaller. Put 
a smaller hole on this one. I'll have to get a smaller eyelet for that. And the bigger eyelet on this one. And the black grommet on there. And this, I'm going to take a little bit of this gold gilding wax. I'm just going to go around the edge of this. I can rub a little of that off if it's too much. And then I would put, probably hang this twine I have. I can loop this like that. If I can get behind between the two layers, I can probably put some three and one there. Stick the ends behind there and just press down. Like that, let that dry fully. Let's put some thread here. These are very simple. These aren't supposed to be really fancy and I think that's the key of a tree. Like when you're making a, a Christmas tree, right? You hang the balls and the simpler things in between the busier things so that the more the more fancy decorations or the more elaborate decorations stand out more right it's kind of the same idea with this these are the real simple um, ornaments and they're very cohesive because they're part of that same master board that I made and so they have the same look but they're a lot more simple and in this very short amount of time we were able to make five additional ornaments. So my idea is not to finish all the ornaments today, but to enjoy myself being creative and like maybe taking out this kit and all my fun things and making a bunch of ornaments um, whenever, whenever I was in the mood. And then by the time Halloween comes, I'll have a whole bunch. So we have these five that we made super quick. And then we have the other three that I made on day one. And let's finish up by tying on my band, putting in the sticks, and then hanging the ornaments. Okay, this is dry. It feels very secure. I'm going to turn it backwards here. And now I'm going to really tie this on. And I'm going to be careful about tying it in a way that's not ripping and is supporting the integrity of the piece. So I'm gonna actually, if I had someone else's finger here, that would be helpful. But since I don't, that looks really cute. I'm really happy with that. I could even hang something in the center here. I'm not so sure I want to, but let's stuff it. Okay, so here is the vase, and I think it looks really neat. I don't know what you guys think, but I love that this is like 3D and that there's, you know, the little bit of 
cloth in here and the rest of pin. I like this detail here. And I just think the snippet roll effect that Masterboard cut up has such an effective look. So I'm going to try my very best to decorate this with whilst holding the camera. So here I just put in the sticks, right? Like that. And what I really like about the spray painted sticks is that they're a very similar color. There's plenty of little tiny things to hang on it and it really melds well with down here. So let me hang the ornaments and then I'll come right back. Here it is, here is my Halloween tree. It's not completely full, obviously, just showing the eight ornaments that I created with you all. But even just those eight ornaments do stand out and I think it looks good. There's so many more spaces for me to add ornaments over the next few months. And let's just take a peek real quick from the base all the way up to each different kind of ornament we created together. I think that they look terrific. And I'm so happy with the way that they came out. I think this will make a really effective and cool Halloween piece of decor. I hope you guys enjoyed my videos and this project. Thank you, Tracy, for including me in this wonderful collaboration. And I thank all of you for the community and friendship, comment, support that you have offered me over this month. Uh, I thank all my fellow creators for their inspiration. It's been so fun to watch what everybody's come up with. And I want to thank you for tuning in. And until the next time, bye.